This is the Jewish Bible Man. I'm glad everybody's joining me. If you got any comments or questions, feel free to comment or ask the question on the bottom or email me. Either way is okay. Today I'm really addressing a question. Somebody had asked me a question from 2 Corinthians 12. Uh, I believe it's verse 9. Uh, actually between 7 and 9. But the question really is in verse 7, I believe. Let me just double check that. Yeah, it is in verse 7. And the question was this from 2 Corinthians 12, 7. It says, it says, For this reason a, there was a thorn in the flesh, a messenger of Satan to torment me. So he was so Paul was having a thorn in the flesh. And this thorn in the flesh, the question is, what was the thorn in the flesh? Well, we know the source of it was not was not God, but was Satan, right? Obviously, God is sovereign, so he sends Satan to torment him, which is a different topic. But whatever was going on there was tormenting Paul. So let, let's talk about that for a minute. First, here's what we can absolutely know for sure. It is not a physical infirmity. He wasn't suffering from what was tormenting him. wasn't an eye problem. wasn't a physical problem. It wasn't a, a disease problem. And the reason I know that is because he actually is very uh, pleased to have suffered for Christ. So he says, he even tells you, for example, back in 2 Corinthians 11, he's talking about the false teachers. He says, are they servants of Christ? I speak as if insane. And he says, I am far more. And here's why he says he's far more. Because he has, here I'll read it. And am I, I am, let me just read it. So let me bumbling all over the place. Are they, this is uh, 2 Corinthians 11, verse 23. Are they servants of Christ? I speak as if insane. I more so. And here's why. In far more labors, in far more imprisonments, beaten times without number, often in danger of death, five times I received from the Jews the 39 lashes, three times I was beaten with rods, once I was stoned, three times I was shipwrecked, and night and day I spend in the deep. I've been in frequent journeys and in dangers from rivers, dangers from robbers, dangers from countrymen, dangers from Gentiles, dangers in the city, dangers in the wilderness, dangers on the sea, dangers among false brethren. I've been in labor, hardship, through many sleepless nights, in hunger and thirst, and often without food, in cold and exposure. So th those things seem to prove that he is actually a true apostle of Christ. The suffering and the beatings prove it because Jesus said, if they treated me this way, you're not greater than your master, are you? So he actually looked at that as, as his prize. There are many other things he could have said but uh, that would have probably exalted his flesh, but probably would not have been proof that he is an apostle. The suffering proves that you're a true disciple of Christ, or at least a true apostle. And so when you come to... 2 Corinthians 12, 9, 12, 7. And he says, he has a thorn in the flesh, a messenger of Satan, so to torment him. Well, we, we, we can eliminate any physical torment because he really didn't see that as a problem. In fact, he goes on to say in verse 10, therefore I am well content in my weaknesses with insults, distress, persecution, with difficulties for Christ's sake. For when I'm weak, then I'm strong. So we're not dealing with anything that is a physical infirmity. Chapter 11, same letter. He says, no, my, my physical infirmities prove that I am true and they are false. He calls them, are they servants of Christ? I speak as if insane. In other words, there is no way they're servants of Christ. And how do you know I'm a servant of Christ? And he lists his beatings and suffering, hunger, shipwreck. He, he just lists all that. And those prove that he is uh, a true apostle. So what am I trying to say? I'm trying to eliminate those things as a possibility. E even if he had an eye problem, that would not have been it either. Uh, well, Paul, one thing never left Paul was how unworthy he was because of all the persecution he caused to the church before converting to Christ. So he, he understood. He understood whatever he got, he deserved. But more than that, he viewed it as his trophy. So with that said, what is the thorn in the flesh? Well, I'm going to tell you what it is. 
Since we eliminate physical infirmity, the only other possibility is spiritual infirmity, right? Spiritual suffering, a spiritual thorn, right? So, what spiritual thorn did he suffer? Corinthians is a book and a letter written to a church that is disobedient. 1 Corinthians is written to a church that's disobedient. 2 Corinthians is written to a church that's disobedient. He's trying to correct it. He even calls the teachers of the Corinthian church uh, disciples or agents of Satan. For he says, no wonder that they disguise themselves as angels of light, because even Satan disguises himself as an angel of light. So the point is that he even refers to them as demonic and satanic in what they're teaching in the church. So, so what thorn does he have? Well, first we won't get into why the thorn is given to him, only what the thorn is. And the thorn is the church. He, he is immensely suffering because of what the church is teaching and how believers are following the wrong teaching. In fact, in the previous chapter, he says this, apart from everything I just told you, apart from external things, right? He says, there is a daily pressure on me. There is a daily pressure on me of concern for all the churches. Who is weak without me being weak? And who is led into sin without my intense concern? He says, if I, if I have to boast, I will boast of what pertains to my weakness. Then God, the Father of the Lord Jesus, the God of Father of the Lord Jesus Christ, who is blessed forever, amen, who is blessed forever, knows that I am not lying. All, all this to say is that he is saying that his intense concern for the churches is more difficult than the physical infirmity because they're being led away from Christ. They're being led away into things that aren't right. They're, 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 you know, he talks about tongues over there, right? He talks about false tongues. And he talks about real tongues. He's actually indicating two kinds of tongues in Corinthians. It's funny that uh, most of the time when we want to justify tongue speaking, we use the false ones in, in the book of Corinthians and forgotten that the book of Corinthians is actually a rebuke, not an encouragement to do something, but, uh, but an instruction to stop doing it. But now, with that said, that is his thorn in the side. God wants to keep him humble. So what does he do? I mean, I'm going to say this as delicately as I can. He's actually, God is bringing down the church to keep Paul humble. That's crazy, I know, but that's what he's doing, right? He's sending a, an agent of Satan, right, to come in there. A messenger of Satan was sent to him, right? And it's tormenting him, and it's his thorn in the side. Why? Because it's destroying the fabric of the Corinthian church. And he is deeply distressed over it. So with that said, you know, I didn't exhaust the text at all. I didn't try to exhaust it. But I hope that answers the question. This to sum it up for you. The, the thorn in the side is the church being disobedient and falling apart. And Paul has intense concerns for these churches. And, and let me tell you, you know, all through these New Testament epistles, I mean, that's what he's dealing with, right? In, in Galatia, he's got a problem. In Corinth, he's got a problem. The only, the only epistle, one of the only epistles that he's writing to encourage the church that's faithful is not the only one, but it's one of the most famous is the epistle of the Romans, right? A letter to the Romans. Because the Romans are actually faithful. He even says your faith is being proclaimed throughout the whole world. And Paul hadn't been able to go there yet. He even says, I have longed to come to you, but I can't, right? But hopefully he's going to, to come to them and proclaim the gospel to them. But... Not, not for salvation, but for encouragement and build up on how to witness to people. Now, with that said, uh, right here, that's what he's dealing with. He says, he tells you, There was given me a thorn in the flesh, a messenger of Satan, to torment me, to keep me from exalting myself. He, he implored the Lord three times, and the Lord said, No. My grace is sufficient. Whatever is happening into the church, you're going to have to trust me with my grace. So I hope that answers the question. I hope that it's clear. If you have any questions about this, feel free to text me, write me, email me, comment. I'll be glad to do it. And again, this is not by no means exhausting this text. This, is a, this could be a long 
drawn out sermon for many, many hours. So hopefully that gives you some insight into what Paul is going through, and hopefully that gives you some understanding also to what Paul is feeling. Now ask yourself this question. Do you have intense concern for the church also? Right? I mean, the church today is full of falsehood. I, I mean, you know, I, I would tell you something that's most distressful to me. If I was to put myself in Paul's shoes in today's world, we certainly aren't going to be beat up and thrown in jail, not yet anyway. But, but what concerns me about the church is every single week you go to church and you have these sermons that are reaching into topics, right? And, and, and usually they're always the same, love, they, it's whatever you want to pick, right? The problem with that is, is that while the, the messenger himself might be a Christian and might be proclaiming a good message, what happens when somebody steps in who's not a good teacher, who is a false teacher, and the people sitting and listening aren't equipped to discern the right and the wrong that they're hearing? And if, frankly, that's what concerns me most about the church. The number one concern I have for the church today is a lack of discernment. They don't know error from truth. They don't know what is opinion and what is scripture, and it's whatever somebody tells them is what they believe. So with that said, I hope you hear my heart. I hope you all know that I want nothing but the best in the Lord for you. And if there's anything I can do, please reach out to me, and I'll be glad to help any way I can. Lehito, and we'll talk to you soon.